All right, today's video is about statistics. It's our first day in our statistics unit. We're basically going to talk about um, types of statistic gathering techniques, whether it's uh, you know an experiment, a study, or a survey. Uh, my advice to you is to pause this and write down these things in the blanks there. Okay, when you're done with that, uh, play, and, and I'm going to be talking about them. The first one: survey voluntary response. Um, it's like when you know when the people in the clipboards in the mall interview you about your spending habits, or when you're on the internet and you're clicking around on sites and they have a pop up. You know, they'll say, "Hey, take our survey." And it's basically they ask you questions. And it's completely voluntary. A controlled experiment is one more where you'll see this like with um, in medicine quite frequently. Okay, uh, one group is given some form of treatment, and the other group is given nothing. And a lot of times, the people that are given nothing don't know they're getting nothing. They give them they give them a placebo, which is basically um, a sugar pill or whatever, so that they don't have any psychological feelings of oh, I'm getting the medication, I get better. It, that way, it'll take care of that um, unknown. And it can be done in a weight loss program or anything else. And it's done with new drug testing frequently. And an observational study is something where there is no treatment provided. The groups are observed, and it's it's impractical to intervene, or in, or it's in unethical, right? Where like a drug abuse and birth defects. I mean, it would be unethical to um, give somebody drugs that you think they might cause birth defects when they're pregnant, because that would be unethical. Okay. All right. So what do we have here? Some terms, a population, okay? The population in statistics is the total group we are interested in, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's everybody, everybody that we're talking about. Examples of some populations, um, seniors in New York State, or cans of beans from a plant, okay? That could be considered a population. Now, a sample is going to be a small portion of the population. For example, I could take the seniors in New York State whose Social Security ends in nine. Or a can chosen off the line every hour. Randomly go over and grab a can off the line once an hour and test it. Okay, that's what a sample is. All right, a bias. That's something that skews data. All right, um, there are several types of bias. Probably the most common are selection and non-response non bias, okay? The other ones happen too, but basically selection is, is the biggest one. The people selected are not a good representation of the population of, of, as a whole. An example of a selection bias might be to um, survey the people leaving a double days game about money that the county should spend for a library or to I don't know, build a new a little league field or something like that. Most people leaving a double A's game like baseball are going to be more inclined to choose the baseball field uh, for the community spending than, say, the general population would be. A non response bias is the non responders are not responding for a statistically significant reason. This would be like voluntary drug testing, like in the NFL. Let's say they didn't test drugs unless you wanted them to, they didn't, check, they didn't test for steroids. They do, but it's voluntary. Well, the people who are taking steroids aren't going to submit to the test. So that would be an example of a non-response bias. Okay? Treatment bias. <coughs> All right, so if the control group varies for some other reason than the treatment from the treatment group. So if I'm doing like a weight loss study and I have like a control group, which is the group that um, is given nothing, and how are they different from the treatment group? Well, like the treatment group, if I'm giving them like a, a weight loss pill, and at the same time, you know, memberships to a fitness club. Now, are they losing weight because of the, they're working out at the fitness club, or are they losing weight because they are taking the pill? All right, that would be like a treatment bias. Measurement bias, um, this is when you just are kind of sloppy with your study, all right? Er errors in data collection or the way in which the data is collected lead to incorrect data. All right, and that one's not as common, all right? Assuming people are doing their job well. And now we have types of samples. And again, you may want to pause this, copy down, 
uh, the stuff on the blanks here, and then I, and then play it again as I as I go through them. Random sampling is uh, the best way to sample a population. It's it's done through some random process. You could do a random num number generator. You could take the students in the school and say everybody whose last digit in their social security number is a nine. Those kind of things. Names would be drawn out of a hat. Um, that's random. All right. Convenient sampling. Uh, it, it's collect. It's selected for ease and cost efficiency. So, like, I, I, for example, if we wanted to survey or poll teachers at in New York State about whether or not we think the Regents test should be canceled or whether or not they're valid or whatever, um, if I just asked all the teachers of Port Byron, that would be convenient for me. I'd send an email to everybody that works here and and uh, I'd get my results and use Port Byron as the sample. And that's not a good practice usually, okay? Because maybe there's some something different, you know, than would be um, in other portions of the population. And with the, you know, with the, uh, with all the technology we have nowadays, convenience sampling really is kind of just really lazy. You know, I could very easily send my survey questions to a listserv that I'm part of, all the, all the math teachers in New York State, and then get a much more uh, representative sample. Okay. Or people leaving a movie sur surveyed about entertainment. You know, hey, these people won't mind asking questions about movies. We'll ask these people. Okay. Again, that's just kind of uh, it's kind of convenient. Voluntary response. All surveys are voluntary response. People decide whether they want to participate in the study or not. All right. Um, that's voluntary response. Okay. Next. At this time, please release the baseball players. At this time, please release the varsity baseball players. Thank you. Okay, very good. B, types of data. Qualitative versus quantitative. Qualitative is described by words like your gender or your favorite band, okay? These are things that are, they have their qualities that something possesses, okay? Um, something could be blue. We describe it with the way it smells or um, its texture. Is it rough or smooth? Okay, those are qualitative pieces of data. All right, and then quantitative, those are described by numbers. Okay, that's that's really kind of what, and that's a quantity. Quality, qualitative, quantity, quantitative. And quantitative is broken down further into two types of data. There's discrete and continuous. All right, the discrete counts people or things, like a number of CDs or a number of pets. And ask yourself, you know, can you have really half a dog? No, right? That's a discrete piece of data. I either have one dog or I have two dogs or I have four dogs. I don't really say I have four and a half dogs, all right? Continuous is something that measures data continuously. Weight and age are a couple of good ones of those, right? Um, for example, age, right? I, I'm not going to be 41 all year, and then on my birthday next year, all of a sudden age a year and become 42. Okay, yes, I will still say I'm 41, but I am continuously aging. And your weight is continuously changing. You just don't jump from like one pound to the next pound, okay? Those are continuous types of data. Bivariate versus univariate. This is all about the prefix. All right? The prefix bi is for two, and uni is for one. And variate means, well, variables. Or one kind of a bivariate is I have two kind of unknown conditions, or two, two things going on. Univariate is one thing. Bivariate compares two things, age and weight. Univariate, data about one thing. Billy's English test scores. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at the, the following ones here and determine if the following studies will result in univariate or bivariate data. All right, the age of first-time mothers in Cayuga County. Is there anything I'm comparing that age to, or am I just talking about age? It seems like I'm just talking about age in that case, right? So that's going to be an example that is univariate. Okay, age and shoe size of students in school. Right, well, what are we talking about? We're talking about age and shoe size. That's two things by 
variant. Scores on the Algebra 2 regions. That's just the scores on the Algebra 2 regions, right? It doesn't say an age of student or number of hours that the student studied. That's a univariate piece of data. And then the scores on the geometry regions and hours spent studying, well, I'm talking about scores versus the hours spent studying. The more hours you study, the higher your score will be, hopefully. Okay? All right. So in class tomorrow, we're going to do a quick thing on, like, univariate, bivariate, continuous, discrete. Um, there's going to be, like, this, uh, it's this uh, blue workbook page. I'll make copies for you. I don't have the workbooks anymore. But we'll go through that just to kind of familiarize ourselves with studies. Okay? Thanks. Bye.